This is Motoring Today, the Philippines' premier and longest-running weekly motoring news and features TV and online magazine. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Here are this week's features to watch out for. On Motoring Forum, we shall discuss the LTFRB's go-ahead signal for 100,000 driver partners. A road safety reminder on the Young Street Smart portion centers on the right of way of vehicles turning right. This week's spying to bear shall be about the no smoking policy in PUVs. All these plus the latest use in transportation and traffic management, as well as developments in the automotive industry, are on this week's edition of Motor in Today. Join us. Confident to the core. Welcome back to Motoring Today. Here now are the latest news and developments in the country's transportation and traffic management. Transport authorities seem to have given in again to the wishes of operators of old jeepneys still resisting government inducements to modernize their vehicles and operations. The Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board has extended the validity of franchises of jeepneys more than 15 years old. These are supposed to expire by the end of April in Metro Manila and March in the rest of the nation. The LTFRB said it feared a transport shortage and that it wanted to give jeepney operators more time to form cooperatives and take advantage of incentives and funding to modernize their operations. It is estimated that only 60% of jeepneys targeted has joined the modernization program. The LTFRB is reportedly now deliberating on new guidelines on the consolidation of old routes and the setting of new routes reserved for modern jeepneys with Euro 4 compliant engines or battery powered electric motors. Jeepney drivers, operators, and cooperatives have been complaining that the shift to e jeepneys was difficult in terms of affordability and feasibility of operations under the modernization program. The government's PUV modernization program appears to be losing traction and needs some tweaking to regain momentum to reach targets. Meanwhile, the DOTR is serious about turning over the EDSA busway to the private sector and is actively seeking help to get this underway. The Department of Transportation has sought the assistance of the Private Public Partnership Center to facilitate plans to turn over the EDSA busway to the private sector. The assistance comes in the form of funding and contracting a consultant for a feasibility study for privatizing the EDSA busway. The DOTR expects to hire a consultant by March and the study to be completed in six months. The DOTR still has to decide on whether the bus operations and stations of development of the infrastructure would be packaged as one for privatization. Transportation Secretary Jaime Bautista reportedly wants to complete the privatization of the 551 million peso EDSA busway within the year, saying the government lacks a budget to maintain and upgrade the infrastructure. 
privatizing the Edsa busway, its stations and operations may not happen as quickly as transport authorities are projecting. Meanwhile, commuters will be hoping that this won't affect the operations of a service that has cut their travel time on Edsa. Continuing, Metro Pacific Tollways is continuing to extend and expand its network of expressways while making it more convenient to pay toll using RFIDs and digital apps. Metro Pacific Tollways Corporation is continuing to innovate new products, apps, and services, even as it expands its network of expressways. South of Metro Manila, the Cavitex and Calix are adding more links, helping to decongest traffic in the southern portion of the metro. Cavitex R1 is from Rojas Boulevard until uh, Kawit, and then we have the Cavitex C5 link, which now connects uh, Taguig, uh, and you cross over, you cross over Slex, and you get down to Merville Paranaque towards Moonwalk. That is very convenient if you are coming from Taguig, uh, going towards Paranaque. It actually decongests the area of Salas Road and uh, the area of the east. Uh, service roads and the west service roads uh, along SLEX. No? And then for Calax, uh, it is convenient now for people coming from uh, Metro Manila, Makati, Manila to get to Tagaytay because uh, from once the, you enter Calax, it only takes about uh, 30 minutes to 45 minutes to get to Tagaytay. Meanwhile, MPT Mobility is stepping up the development of news apps and services and creating new products for motorists. We're constantly innovating, coming up with new products and apps and services to make the customer journey better in and out of the expressways. Among these services is Easy Trip, which is now on the second phase of the interoperability project. Our focus right now is the interoperability. Uh, we are now at phase two on the interop. Uh, yung interoperability po is uh, one RFID with uh, two wallets. Ang ibig sabihin lang po nito. Uh, kahit po ang inyong RFID sticker ay from Autoswip or it's Easy Trip, you just need to register kahit alin po doon sa dalawang sticker na yon. And hopefully, in the future po, magkakaroon na tayo ng one RFID, one wallet. But right now, on the phase 2, it's uh, one RFID sticker, two wallets. You will just need to load your Easy Trip and your Autoswip RFID account. It's a newer product that drives MPT Mobility this year. MPT Drive Hub app is the newest app um, for, which is the travel companion app. Um, it was launched last uh, March 2022, and we also launched in Cebu last July uh, of 2022. This is the best way to manage your RFID account for any um, MPTC uh, RFID motorist. Aside from the core features na meron yung MPT Drive Hub app ngayon, um, we are also looking at adding other features uh, within the year. So we have the emergency roadside assistance. Um, ngayon it's present along the expressways. Pero once this one is available, uh, there will, we will be able to provide this service even outside the expressways. Uh, second, uh, we will also have the pre-book parking uh, available. We are currently providing that service uh, through our uh, other operating unit, it's called DIVS, but that will also be made available later on within the year um, through the MPT Drive Hub app. Then we will also have the insurance. So if any of our motorists uh, wants to uh, purchase either comprehensive insurance or compulsory third-party liability insurance, uh, they can choose uh, among our options uh, within the MPT Drive Hub app and they can just uh, pay it there as well. Then we will also have a marketplace there later on uh, through the application, generally um, providing uh, items that are for the motorist uh, users natin. Um, may it be uh, car parts, car accessories, or even uh, second-hand cars. Motorists should really learn to take advantage of the benefits offered by mobile apps for managing RFID accounts for paying toll as well as getting real-time traffic updates. And finally, the LTFRB says that it will be opening new slots for TNVS franchises for Grab Philippines. 
This is good for job creation, right? The Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board is reportedly given the go-ahead to add 100,000 driver partners to its transport network vehicle service. LTFRB Chairman Teofilo Guadis III said the agency aims to provide the NVS franchises to other motor vehicles across the country, including the cities of Bacolod, Iloilo, Cebu, and Davao. He said the LTFRB will issue two memorandum circulars containing regulations and qualifications for TNVS drivers or riders. Guade said these requirements include holding a professional driver's license and completing a 15-hour seminar that concentrates on road safety. Opening new slots for TNV units is easy, but the question is, will there be any takers? And those are the latest news and developments in transportation and traffic management. Coming up next is Motoring Forum, brought to you by Suzuki Philippines. The LTFRB has effectively given Grab Philippines the go-ahead to take on 100,000 new driver partners. This has its present crop of driver partners worried about their livelihood. Motoring Forum discusses these worries. Is there a need to increase the number of transport network vehicle service units on the road? That is a question some are asking after the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board said that there is going to open 100,000 slots for the NVS franchises. LTFRB Chairman Teofilo Guadis admitted that the directive to increase the number of TNVS franchises open for new applications came from the Office of the President. Soon after this was announced, many TNVS drivers expressed worry for their livelihood while revealing many of them were not earning as much because demand for their services have waned. However, Guadis allayed such fears, saying that the supposed 100,000 new slots for TNVS franchises already include the 45,000 franchises for motorcycle taxis and 4,000 franchises for regular TNVS units earlier open. What is also pointed out that the new franchises will be open not only for Metro Manila, but also for other cities like Cebu, Davao, Iloilo, Bacolod, and other urban areas where there is demand for TNVS units. He also indicated that since there is still a pile of study, the LTFRB can reduce the number of slots for new franchises if there is an oversupply. Guadis may be referring to motorcycle taxi franchises which are still under study. However, observers note that the LTFRB can open any number of slots for franchises, but how many will apply for the slots? What happened a few months ago is instructive. The LTFRB had then announced opening around 7,000 TNVS franchise slots and set a deadline for applications. However, there was no rush for applications and the LTFRB closed the window for applications without even getting close to the getting the 7,000 expected applications. Whether Grab Philippines can indeed amass more driver partners for its TNVS operations is really still up in the air. And if indeed Grab driver partners are not making money, will more right-thinking individuals take a chance of becoming one? That's our Motoring Forum this week, courtesy of Suzuki Philippines. Here on Motoring Today, we now have this week's important motoring tips, starting off with some road safety reminders from Toyota Motor Philippines. If you are stopped at an intersection, paunahin ang sasakyan na nasa kanan dahil ito ay may right of way. It is important to keep this in mind for smooth travel. Continuing with this week's edition of Morning Today, let's now focus on proper driver's demeanor, especially for those driving PUVs. Here's Spying to Bear this week. Spying to Bear lang kaibigan. Ako po si Harris. Isa po ang kapwa ninyo, Chopper. 
Baka di nyo alam, ang paninigarilyo ay matagal nang ipinagbabawal sa mga pampublikong sasakyan. Respeto na lang po sa ating mga pasahero, lalo na sa mga di naninigarilyo na kasakay mo. Kung ang mga pasahero ay di pwedeng manigarilyo, lalo na sigurong bawal manigarilyo ang nagmamayiho. Ang usok na dulot ng sigarilyo ay perwisyo sa taong nakakalanghap nito. Kapag naninigarilyo ang driver, wala ang atensyon niya sa pagmamaneho. Baka di mo namamalayan, wala na din pala sa direksyon ng pagmamaneho. Kaya sundin ang batas na ito para makaiwas, makaperwisyo. Ito po si Harris Morales, payong chopper lang kaibigan. Mula sa isang kapwan niyo, chopper. to the core. Kailangan nang maaasahan, kailangan nang matibay pang matagalan kasama mo sa pag-unlad ng negosyo, modernong disenyo, kaya-kaya ang cargo mo nang tatak na ito. Isuzu Trap is level up with Isuzu Level up on yung negosyo. Isuzu Trap is level up with Isuzu Level up Our Car of the Week is next on Showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. The Toyota Fortuner has been a fixture in the top rankings of the mid-size SUV segment since it was first introduced locally, most of the time at the very summit. It comes from continually adding and improving on features inside and out, and on providing what Fortuner owners and would-be owners want, always adding value to the product already filled with value. The latest upgrade has been given the GR treatment, that's for Gazoo Racing, Toyota's motorsports development arm. That treatment didn't affect the overall dimensions of the Toyota Fortuner GRS 2.8 4x4 AT. Like others in the Fortuner lineup, the GRS variant is listed by Toyota at 4,795mm long, 1,855mm wide, and 1,835mm tall. The GR exterior treatment is mainly cosmetic. There's the GR badge, unobtrusively added to the mesh-type front grille with a bi-tone finish. Then there's the GR Design 18-inch alloy wheels with a machine-cut finish that comes with 265-60 R18 tires. Also distinguishing it from other Fortuners is the back door garnish that is the same color as the body paint. The same is true of the outside door handles. The Fortuner GRS shares with the Fortuner LTDs the same split-type LED headlamps and all LED daytime running lights with line guide, sequential front turn signal lamps, and front fog lamps. The rear lamps features a combination of LED with line guide, sequential signal, and bulb light. The GRS also features black and chrome door belt molding, front and rear mud guards, roof rail, and the blacked out rear view mirrors with welcome lamp that power adjust and fold. More cosmetic changes were done to the interior too. Suede plus leather for seat upholstery and trim. Smoke silver metallic, matte carbon, and red stitching accent the instrument panel, center cluster, and door trims. Then there's the GR badge and the leather wrapped steering wheel that also comes with paddle shifter and controls for the multi information display and cruise control. The steering wheel tilts and telescopes, which is great for getting the preferred driving position for comfort or performance. Boat driver and front seat passenger enjoy eight way power adjusting seats. 
the second row seat for a three split 60 40. Slides and reclines and comes with one touch tumble function to allow for easy ingress and egress to and from the third row seating for two. The center armrest also adds to comfort if only two occupy the second row. The third row seat splits 50 50, can be reclined and feature easy space up function to increase luggage space in the back. The GRS comes with all of the comfort and convenience as well as smart connectivity features of the latest four tuners. These include smart keyless entry and push start system, dual zone auto climate control, as well as power windows with auto up down function and jam protection and speed sensing door locks. The rear tailgate also opens and closes electronically. A kick sensor makes for hands-free opening and closing of the tailgate which can come in handy. The GRS shares with other higher-end 4x4 Ford tuners that infotainment system that comes with an 8-inch display audio, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Smart Device Link, as well as AM, FM radio, Bluetooth, and USB, voice command, as well as a JBL 9 speaker system. The GRS treatment is more than cosmetic when it comes to ride and handling performance. The 4 tutor GRS is powered by Toyota's 1GD FTV high diesel engine. This is a 2,755 four-cylinder inline 16-valve DOHC diesel engine with variable nozzle turbo and air-cooled intercooler. This provides a 4 tutor 204 PS and 500 Nm of torque, made it to a 6-speed automatic transmission and with a 4x4 drivetrain. The 4 tutor GRS is both comfortable and capable in on paved byways and highways and unpaved roads and trails. The 4x4 drivetrain comes with differential lock with auto disconnect function. And in these days of diesel costing nearly as much or more than gasoline, depending on the whims of oil companies, the 4 tutor GRS comes with two drive modes, Eco and Sport. Eco being more important for everyday driving, Sport coming in handy for weekend adventures. The GR treatment comes to 4 in the suspension and the brakes. The 4 tuner GRS suspension got upgraded with monotube shock absorbers for the double wishbones up front and the multi link system in the rear. The brake system uses ventilated discs on all four wheels along with GR brake calipers. The GRS powertrain and chassis provide both a comfortable and confident ride for a mid-sized SUV that is, on varied road conditions including off-road. This is helped along by a power steering system with variable flow control that make turning the wheel feel light when going slow and progressively harder with speed. Also adding to confidence are the passive and active safety features that come standard in every Ford tuner. Anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution and brake assist. Vehicle Stability Control with Traction Control, Hill Start Assist. The GRS is also fitted with Toyota Safety Sense, an advanced collision prevention system that includes pre-collision system, lane departure alert, and adaptive cruise control as well as blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. Also added for safety and security in the Fortuner GRS are three-point ELR seat belts for seven, with seat belt reminder and pre-tensioner and adjustable seat belt anchors for driver and front passenger, child restraint system using isofix and teether anchors, child lock and rear doors, that Toyota Vehicle Security System featuring an immobilizer and alarm. That's our featured vehicle in this week's showcase, courtesy of Potential Guarantee. Welcome back to Motoring Today! The auto industry now takes center stage. Southgate Motors Ventures Corporation has opened its third Nissan dealership. Nissan SVC Desmarinas is located along 3170 ME Agnado Highway, Salitiran 2 in Desmarinas, Cavite. Nissan Philippines President Juan Manuel Hoyos graced the festive grand opening of another Nissan dealership in the province of Cavite. 
I want just to congratulate SBC. Now he's helping us to expand our, our network. And this is very important because now in Cavite, in Las Mariñas, you will have the newest investment of SBC, opening a new Nissan dealership here in the seven largest region in the Philippines. It's very important for us. We have a large customers already in this area that they can only not just buy our new products like the Kixi Power or the Livina, but also they can service their cars that they have been bought in the other dealerships around the area. It is amazing. This is a great investment. It's completely brand new and I'm loving it. Thais Ornet, president of Southgate Motors Ventures, invites Nissan car owners and enthusiasts to visit the new landmark in Das Marinas. I am inviting all our customers to visit our newest baby, the Nissan Das Marinas Cavite. And not only from here in Das Marinas, but the whole of Cavite, we are inviting you to come over and see for yourself our newest models like the Kicks, Livina, and the new patrol. Our service is open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. One of the most powerful SUVs in the world is now available in the country. Aston Martin Manila has rolled out the new DBX707 to stake a claim to having the most powerful ultra-high luxury SUV on local roads. And the DBX707 is the fastest SUV in the world. It is a, an upgrade of a, the DBX V8. Everything's bigger. The brakes are bigger. The engine's more powerful. The rims are bigger. The brakes are bigger. So it's really a performance SUV. It's a good balance between performance, luxury, and comfort. Basically, you can drive this north to south and you'd feel fresh after. Ownership of the DBX 707 comes with a 33.5 million peso price tag, but Aston Martin Manila believes this is still extremely competitive for its segment. Aston Martin Manila promises more exciting products are to be launched this year. Uh, there will be more variants that will be coming this year, more powerful, more exclusive, so just stay tuned. It's going to be an exciting year. in motoring. Thank you for joining us. Also, don't forget to check us out on social media. Until next week here on Motoring Today, now on its 36th year of continuing service to the General Motoring Public with a lifelong commitment to promote road safety. On behalf of our dad, Butch Gamboa, I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Happy, Happy motoring! motoring.